The universe is full of mysteries and wonders, and we are lucky to have a powerful telescope that can reveal some of them to us. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, which it has been exploring the depths of space since its launch in 2021. It has already made some amazing discoveries, such as finding water vapor on an ultra-hot exoplanet, spotting a plume jetting from Saturn's moon Enceladus, and witnessing the complexity and diversity of distant galaxies. But some of its discoveries are also puzzling and surprising, such as finding six massive galaxies that formed when the universe was only 800 million years old. Scientists call these galaxies universe breakers because they break our understanding of how the universe works. But today, we are going to talk about another set of six galaxies that are even older and more distant than the universe breakers. These galaxies are so ancient and far away that they challenge our understanding of how the universe evolved. What are these galaxies, and what can they teach us about the history of the cosmos? Let's find out. Before we dive into the six galaxies that JWST has recently discovered, let's take a look at some of its previous discoveries that puzzled scientists. You see, JWST is not just a telescope, it's a time machine. It can peer back in time to see how the universe looked billions of years ago, when it was much younger and hotter. By doing so, it can help us answer some of the biggest questions in astronomy. How did the first stars and galaxies form? How did they shape the structure and composition of the universe? How did they give rise to planets, life, and us? But JWST is also a troublemaker. It likes to challenge our theories and expectations by showing us things that we didn't think were possible. For example, in February 2023, JWST detected six massive galaxies that formed when the universe was only 800 million years old. These galaxies are so huge and bright that they defy our models of galaxy formation, which predict that galaxies should start small and grow gradually over time. Scientists call these galaxies universe breakers, because they break our understanding of how the universe works. How did these galaxies get so big so fast? One possibility is that they were fed by streams of gas from the surrounding space, which fueled their star formation. Another possibility is that they were formed by mergers of smaller galaxies, which triggered bursts of star formation. Or maybe there is something else going on that we don't know yet. Whatever the case, these galaxies show us that the early universe was more complex and dynamic than we thought. But these are not the only universe breakers that JWST has found. It has also spotted quasars in the early universe, which are extremely bright objects powered by supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies. Quasars are among the most luminous and energetic phenomena in the universe, and they can influence their environments by emitting radiation and jets of matter. But how did these black holes grow so massive so quickly? And how did they affect the formation and evolution of galaxies around them? These are some of the questions that JWST is trying to answer. But today's episode is not about quasars or universe breakers. It's about another set of six galaxies that are stunningly beautiful and mysterious. These galaxies are even older and more distant than the ones we just talked about. And they reveal some of the earliest stages of galaxy formation in the universe. Let's take a closer look at them in the next section. The six galaxies that we are going to talk about today were discovered by JWST as part of a project called JADES, which stands for JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey. This project aims to survey several patches of sky with JWST's infrared cameras, looking for faint and distant galaxies that formed early in the universe's history. By doing so, it hopes to shed light on how galaxies emerged from the cosmic dark ages, when the first stars and black holes lit up the universe. The six galaxies that Jade's found are among the most distant objects ever seen by any telescope. They have redshifts greater than eight, which means that their light has been stretched by the expansion of space for more than 13 billion years before reaching us. We see them as they were when the universe was less than 650 million years old, or less than 5% of its current age. These galaxies are like fossils from a bygone era, preserving information about how the universe looked in its infancy. Let's go through each of these galaxies one by one, starting with the most distant one. The Record Holder This galaxy, 
is the current record holder for the most distant object known in the universe. It has a redshift of 13.2, which means that it formed only 320 million years after the Big Bang. That's incredibly early, considering that the first stars are thought to have formed around 200 million years after the Big Bang. This galaxy is so far away that its light has been stretched by a factor of 14, making it appear very red and faint. This galaxy is also very small and compact, only a few hundred light years across, but it is very active and bright. It is producing new stars at a rate comparable to the Milky Way today, which is remarkable for such a young and tiny galaxy. Scientists think that this galaxy may contain some of the first stars ever formed in the universe, which were massive and short-lived. These stars may have emitted intense radiation and exploded as supernovae, influencing the formation and evolution of this galaxy and others around it. The Glowing Dog Bone This galaxy is slightly less distant than the previous one, with a redshift of 11.3, although that distance still needs to be confirmed. Assuming it is, then it appears as it was around 400 million years after the Big Bang. JWST is finding more structure early on in the universe than anyone had expected. The dog bone seems to be two smaller galaxies in the process of coalescing. So by 400 million years after the Big Bang, the universe had already formed stars that grouped into galaxies, and two of those galaxies had come together. Before JWST began surveying the night sky, scientists had not thought that so much galactic action was possible so early in the universe. I did not expect to see these types of objects at all in our data, Hainline says. The one with, maybe, the first stars. This galaxy is slightly more distant than the previous one, with a redshift of 12.1. It formed about 370 million years after the Big Bang, and it is also very small and star-forming. But what makes this galaxy special is that it shows signs of water vapor in its spectrum. Water is a key ingredient for life as we know it, and finding it in such an ancient galaxy is surprising and exciting. Scientists think that this galaxy may have had a lot of molecular hydrogen gas, which can cool down the gas and allow stars to form more efficiently. Some of this hydrogen may have combined with oxygen from the stars to form water molecules, which can be detected by JWST's infrared sensors. This galaxy may be an example of how water and other complex molecules emerged in the early universe. The Big Clumpy One This galaxy has a redshift of 11.2, which means that it formed about 420 million years after the Big Bang. It is slightly larger and more massive than the previous galaxies, but it is also very dusty. Dust is composed of tiny grains of carbon, silicon, iron, and other elements that are produced by dying stars and supernova explosions. Dust can block visible light, but it can also emit infrared light when heated by stars. This galaxy shows a lot of dust emission in its spectrum which indicates that it has experienced a lot of star formation and stellar death in its short history. Scientists think that this galaxy may have been enriched by massive stars that lived fast and died young, spewing out dust and metals into the interstellar medium. This galaxy may be an example of how dust and metals evolved in the early universe. This galaxy also has a distinctive shape, a disk with clumps of bright regions. These clumps are likely sites of intense star formation, where gas clouds collapse under gravity and ignite new stars. This galaxy resembles some of the disk galaxies that Hubble observed at lower redshifts, but with more clumpiness and irregularity. The Cosmic Rose This galaxy has a redshift of 8.6, which means that it formed about 570 million years after the Big Bang. It is the least distant and the most familiar looking of the six galaxies, with a clear spiral structure and a central bulge. It is also moderately bright and dusty, with a lot of star formation and metal enrichment. This galaxy is remarkable because it is the oldest spiral galaxy ever seen by any telescope. Spiral galaxies are common in the nearby universe, but they are rare and hard to find in the distant universe. Scientists think that spiral galaxies need a lot of time and stability to form and maintain their shape, 
which depends on factors such as gas rotation, magnetic fields, and feedback from stars and black holes. This galaxy may be an example of how spiral galaxies emerged and survived in the early universe. This galaxy also has a beautiful feature. It looks like a rose with petals of light. These petals are actually gravitational lensing effects caused by the bending of light by a massive foreground galaxy cluster. Gravitational lensing can magnify and distort the images of distant galaxies, making them appear brighter and larger than they really are. This galaxy may be an example of how gravitational lensing can help us see farther and deeper into the universe. The Inside Out One This galaxy has a redshift of 10.3, which means that it formed about 470 million years after the Big Bang. It is much larger and more luminous than the previous galaxies, with a diameter of about 10,000 light years and a brightness of about 100 billion suns. It is also very dusty and metal rich, which suggests that it has undergone a lot of star formation and evolution. This galaxy is so bright and massive that it rivals some of the most extreme galaxies in the nearby universe, such as starburst galaxies or ultra-luminous infrared galaxies. Scientists think that this galaxy may have been fueled by gas inflows from its surroundings or by mergers with other galaxies, which triggered bursts of star formation and dust production. This galaxy may be an example of how galaxies grew rapidly in the early universe. This galaxy also has an unusual feature. Its center is less dusty and metal-rich than its outskirts. This is opposite to what we see in most galaxies today, where the center is usually more dusty and metal-rich than the outskirts. Scientists think that this galaxy may have formed from inside out, meaning that its center was cleared out by feedback from stars or black holes, while its outskirts were enriched by gas inflows or mergers. These are the six galaxies that JWST has discovered as part of the JADES project, and they are all fascinating and unique. They show us how diverse and complex the early universe was, and how much we still have to learn about it. But they also raise some questions that we don't have answers for yet. Let's explore some of them in the next section. In this section, we are going to answer some of the frequently asked questions about these old galaxies and Webb's discoveries in general. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. How do we know how far away these galaxies are? One of the ways to measure the distance of a galaxy is to use its redshift, which is a measure of how much its light has been stretched by the expansion of space. The farther away a galaxy is, the more its light has been stretched, and the redder it appears. By comparing the observed wavelength of light from a galaxy with its original wavelength when it was emitted, we can calculate its redshift and infer its distance. But how do we know what the original wavelength of light was? Well, we can use some features in the spectrum of light from a galaxy that correspond to specific elements or molecules, such as hydrogen or water. These features have known wavelengths that depend on the physics of atoms and molecules, which are universal and constant. By identifying these features in a galaxy's spectrum and measuring how much they have been shifted by redshift, we can estimate its distance. James Webb is very good at measuring redshifts because it can detect infrared light, which is where most of the light from distant galaxies ends up after being stretched by space expansion. Webb can also measure very faint signals from very distant galaxies, which are beyond the reach of other telescopes. How do we know what these galaxies are made of? Another way to use the spectrum of light from a galaxy is to analyze its composition and properties. Different elements and molecules have different patterns of absorption and emission lines in their spectra, which act like fingerprints that reveal their identity. By measuring the strength and shape of these lines, we can infer how much of each element or molecule is present in a galaxy, as well as its temperature, density, pressure, and motion. Another thing that James Webb is very good at is analyzing spectra because it has high-resolution instruments that can separate light into very fine details. Webb can also detect infrared light, which is where most of the information about dust, water, and organic molecules is hidden. How do these galaxies compare with our own galaxy? These galaxies are very different from our own galaxy, the Milky Way, in many ways. They are much older and more distant than our galaxy, which formed about 10 billion years ago and is about 25,000 light-years away from us. They are also much smaller and more compact than our galaxy, 
which has a diameter of about 100,000 light years and a mass of about 1 trillion suns. They are also much more active and chaotic than our galaxy, which has a relatively calm and stable history. However, these galaxies may also have some similarities with our galaxy, or at least with its ancestors. They may share some common elements or molecules that are essential for life as we know it. They may also have some common structures or features that are typical of galaxies in general, such as disks, bulges, clumps, or spirals. They may also have some common processes or mechanisms that drive their formation and evolution, such as gas inflows, mergers, star formation, feedback, or rotation. These galaxies may be very different from our galaxy today, but they may also be very similar to our galaxy in the past. They may be like snapshots of what our galaxy looked like when it was young and growing. They may be like distant relatives that share some of our genes and traits. They may be like clues that help us understand our origins and destiny. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you next time.